What is up, everybody? This Howdy. is Justin, if you don't remember. It's good to be here. Yes. And we're going to talk about mis misinformation. Lots of misinformation going off on both sides. Lots of information. And even the fact that we say both sides is 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 not even uh, it's it's an illusion that there's only two sides yeah all sides yeah yeah it, life's life's more like a, a skateboard park than a pendulum i like that yeah <laughs> all the different angles nooks and crannies for different <coughs> ones you may have a friend that you agree with a lot of stuff but all of a sudden you're like in another area and i believe we take on certain beliefs based on survival because there's certain beliefs that you can have that bring money to you. Sure. Or peace and happiness or security or friendships, relationships, whatever. Is, is, is there any way that you're, you're a father? I am. Of four. A father of four. <laughs> and we don't, parents, I'm not, I'm not a parent, but I'm a, I'm a father figure to a lot of people. But we don't necessarily, a lot of parents may not necessarily say, hey, if you, if you don't act this way or if you don't talk this way, you're not going to get anything to eat. But subconsciously, a child might take that in. For sure. There's, a, there's this turtle pond on the San Diego State campus. It's, it's a, there's koi and turtles in there. And I noticed over time that only uh, children and very peaceful people could touch the turtles or the turtles would be afraid of them. And then one time I saw this old, this older guy, older than me, and he, he was sitting there just like playing with the turtle's neck and everything. And I, I asked him, I was like, you must be a marine biologist for the fact that he was able to go in there because he wasn't necessarily, he didn't fit the prototype. He wasn't, he wasn't necessarily peaceful and he wasn't he a wasn't child. Kid, yeah. child. And then he goes like this, he goes, I have pork. <laughs> so we let down our guards and we might have certain beliefs because it brings us, I was going to say brings us abundance, but it brings us money. It brings us status. We might just have these beliefs and they're not necessarily true. It's how we identify. It's how we, go ahead. Or in that case, you have a narrative in your own mind, a perception of why the turtles will let some people get close to them and others not. And you're believing that narrative when unbeknownst to you, your narrative might partly be true, but it doesn't mean that it's the only story. Oh yeah, for sure. Because here's this dude walking up with pork, and 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 in that in that situation, I was kind of talking about life as a pendulum, even though I know it's a skateboard part. So it's it's like I'm I'm um, <laughs> I'm a victim of this too. <laughs> so uh, Mickey wanted to say hi real quick. Hi oh, everybody. I'm just gonna be here, and I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah, I've heard that one before, Mickey. <laughs> Go appropriate somebody else's story. Yes. <laughs> so This is the real Mickey. What are you talking about? I think that um, another interesting thing about, about the skateboard park idea, right, is that everyone's taking their own line because everyone's creating their own story. And they're tr I think we're all trying to make sense of the world in which we live. And that narrative for you about the turtles helped you make sense, it helped you explain why the turtles would let some people get close to them. And then now that you have that explanation, that's something you can hold on to. It seems to me, and I would love to get into this with in relation to how, to my church, I was a former member of the LDS church, the Mormon faith. Um, those stories, those narratives that we tell that explain things to us, they can be, we can come to depend on them. They can become something that we need as part of our identity. Like, <clears throat> obviously the turtle situation is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty simple story. You're not basing your identity on that. But you can extrapolate from that to other bigger stories, maybe things that do have a huger or a greater impact more frequently in your life. And they do become a part of our identity. So, for example, in the LDS church, um, Without giving a super long, boring history story, the LDS Church... That's for, for, that's the Mormon Church. The Church of Jesus Christ yeah, of Latter-day yeah. Saints. Yeah, yeah the Mormons. Mormons. Yeah, yeah. So, for uh, my whole life growing up, I knew that there was a time 
that black people prior to 1978 could not hold the priesthood in the LDS church. Yeah, I think that was a good rule. <laughs> and then in 1978, so I was born in 78, so I wasn't alive when that was going on. But my whole life, I grew up learning this story that the prophet of the church uh, really wanted black people to be able to have the priesthood, but that it wasn't time yet and that God hadn't willed it yet. Um, and the, the, the story that we all were taught and that I believed forever was that the prophet, this guy, Spencer Kimball, was you know, going to God on his knees in the temple, in the Mormon temple, praying fervently, trying to, to plead with the Lord to find out when blacks could have the priesthood. Um, don't know why they're not doing that for women, because they still can't have the priesthood, but <laughs> point is like... Yeah, I think that's a good one too. <laughs> the, the, that was the story. And then suddenly in 1978, Spencer W. Kimball, the, the prophet at the time, gets a revelation so-called from God that says, Hey, it's time black people can now have the priesthood. And so they, they issued this declaration. They put it in one of their books of scripture and black people had the priesthood. And my whole life growing up, it was like, see, we're good. Like we did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't time yet. The problem is, is that for years and years and years, Mormons were running around trying to figure out why the blacks never had the priesthood in the first place, right? And so trying to make sense of the world, we all created our own narratives and some stuck and some didn't and some were promoted by leadership within the church informally and sometimes even formally at their conferences and whatnot from the pulpit, so to speak. So to just give you an example, some of these narratives or stories that we came up with, that Mormons came up with, were like, well, this one's terrible. Uh, black people were not as obedient in the pre-existence. And so that's why they didn't have the priesthood here on earth. And that time has now passed. Or there was the, you know, some of the more secular folks who were pro probably trying to reconcile why this was okay, because it's bullshit. They were saying, well, the church is an organization run by men and men aren't perfect. Or the church is an organization in a very racist America. And if you can imagine the church giving priesthood to the blacks in the 1920s, that when the church was in financial turmoil or even before that late 1800s, I think, then that might have wrecked the church. It might have made it so people didn't join the church. And then there were these stories, well, Brigham Young, and he, he was he was a man. He was a white man in the 1860s colonizing Salt Lake City or Utah and the whole Mormon area. And if he would have done that, then a lot of his members who were southern slave owners who had money would have left the church and then the church wouldn't have been prospering. And so to to further God's will or whatever you want to say, they, it wasn't time yet. Right. To to give the priesthood to black people it's weird it's weird and i don't know where you're going with this but i like i kind of agree to that to a certain extent i mean from a business perspective from an effectiveness perspective an organization building perspective yeah man yeah but also knowing this i'm somebody that's that's for the most part is always willing to, to make that risk to look from to, the other, other side to, yeah. but also to blow something up just because it's just it doesn't feel right i'll push something in. i like i don't care like if this person's a good person i'll stand by their side and i don't care if it's if it's if, if it's bad i'm aligning with peace and trying to like reconcile like help out both sides. Yeah, you're reconcile. a reconciler for yeah, sure yeah. go ahead and like i the point here is that that cognitive dissonance there were people like what you just said who were like I get it. It makes sense. I felt that way in my teens and in my early twenties. It was like, yeah, I kind of get it. They're running a worldwide organization now. I think today with like, they claim 16 million members, like a lot of people were, they didn't want to crush anyone else's fate. There's all these reasons, but the difference, the space between the reasoning creates cognitive dissonance in people because the narrative they've been telling themselves doesn't line up with other narratives or what they, what they're hearing or what they want to believe. So in that case, the fact that it took the church until 1978 to give blacks the priesthood doesn't line up with the fact that America initiated civil rights in the 1960s. 
you know, they're at least a full decade behind. And so in people's attempt to make sense of why their church, their faith, their God would be so behind the ball on that, they come up with all this shit, frankly, with all these stories. I shouldn't say shit. Like, those stories are real. Some people believe those things. So, back to misinformation. That's kind of the background. There's a little more background. So, so we've got all this, these, narrat these narratives being created in the church, and the leadership is not quashing any of that. They're not getting up and publicly saying, guys, this has nothing to do with the pre-existence. This has nothing to do with black people being evil then or now. Um, it just wasn't, they, they don't clarify. So we're left to create a story and to make sense of it ourselves. Okay, fast forward to 2015. I promise I'm getting back to misinformation. The church releases an essay called Race and the Priesthood. And, it, and they place it on an obscure landing page of their website. I shouldn't even call it a landing page because you could not, in 2015 when this was issued, you could not navigate to it from the church's website. There was no direct link to get to this essay. The only way you would find this essay is if you were in a circle or your circle of influence were the type of people who knew about it. Yeah. Historians, theologians, people who were studying the church or studying racism maybe. And then you could Google <clears throat> LDS race and the priesthood and there would there it would be and you'd click on it and it would be on their website. But there was no way to get to it from their website. It's like they were isolating it. I don't know, but it seems like they were kind of isolating the members from actually reading this document. Because the document admitted that there was never a revelation to take away the priesthood from black people. That in fact, they admitted what a lot of historians and lay people like me were reading and studying, that Joseph Smith, the first Mormon prophet, actually gave the priesthood to black people. And they, were, they had full membership. They were able to go to the temple. Um, he was actually a pretty liberal guy for his time in the 1830s, 1840s. Um, and Brigham Young, the second prophet, was the one who took it away. Well, now the church is admitting this is actually what happened. Then they go on to say none of these other reasons that everyone's been coming up with and that they themselves had even been teaching, none of that is the reason. We, the fact is we don't know why. That was their answer. Yeah. We do not know why the, the God or why Brigham Young and other 10 prophets after him denied black people the priesthood. What we do know is that the prophet... Mr. Kimball received a revelation from God in 1978, and now they have the priesthood. There was no apology from the church. It's just, that's the way it is. Here's the truth. Here you go. Then over the next several years, more and more people started to get wind of this essay. They published a few other essays just like it that were related to polygamy or to women not having the priesthood or to the way the Book of Mormon was translated. All these kind of difficult historical narratives that are turning out not to be what we had learned. But again, they're kind of hiding it. They're not telling anyone about it. Well, now, today, it's out there. Y you can go to the church's website, you can click on gospel essays, and you can read all of the essays, including Race and the Priesthood. So my point in all of this is that you can kind of see this kind of unraveling of the church giving, misinforming its members over time, typically by omission, by just not saying anything. Yeah. A really, really, really trite example comparatively is caffeine. A lot of people know that Mormons don't drink coffee, right? If you want to be an active Mormon and go to the temple, you don't drink coffee. Well, Mormons, but, but, but can't you, can't you like just put the coffee, can't you just put the coffee against your lips? No. Just like the, the sexual act yeah. that you do before married, that as like, long as you don't move. Yeah, yeah. Just lay on top of each other. Just, just like you can't drink it, but you touch it to your tongue. Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> right? So, Mormons couldn't drink coffee. And then again, there's no real explanation from the church why we don't drink coffee. Now, historians can, can make a pretty good story, a pretty good explanation of why that revelate or that, that commandment or that rule came about. Because the church doesn't own any Starbucks. Probably. As soon yeah, as they, yeah, yeah they yeah, probably yeah. do now. <laughs> They're getting ready, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. If anyone wants to make a ton of money, a shit ton of money, open a bar or a coffee shop in Salt Lake City, Utah, because there are 
lots of Mormons who are losing their faith and they're all going out and drinking coffee and having beers now. It's like a growing, same with tattoos. It's like uh, yeah. a growing industry now there. So Mormons come up with all these stories why they can't drink coffee. And of course, a very simple story to come up with is that it has caffeine, right? Yeah. Well, we can't do it because of the caffeine. So then guess what happens from there? People stop drinking caffeinated soda. So if you go to Utah 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago when I was a little kid, my folks would drink decaffeinated Diet Coke because they thought they weren't supposed to drink caffeine. Well, again, the church leadership by omission misinformed its people because they never clarified. And so you had all these people running around, some drinking caffeinated beverages, some not. Is that a sin? Is it not? Is it okay? Is it not? And guess how the church resolved that? It's unbelievable. They own some universities, namely BYU like Hawaii, BYU, Idaho, BYU in Provo, Utah. BYU in Provo, Utah is their big one. And I one, thought that was the only one. Oh no, they have yeah, several, yeah. yeah. Then all of a sudden, one day, everyone finds out that BYU is now selling caffeinated sodas on campus. Because my whole life growing up, you couldn't buy a caffeinated Coke on a BYU campus. Yeah. Why? There's no revelation telling us that we can't drink caffeine or soda, just coffee. But that's the crap, that's the story people came up with, even to the extent that one of their universities would not sell it. So the church, to clarify, instead of coming out and saying, guys, we never said you couldn't drink caffeine. We don't know why you can't drink coffee. We just know you can't. They could have said that. People would have been like, okay. But instead they were just silent. And the way they fixed it, was by, without telling anyone, just started selling caffeine on campus. So now you have all these people that are like, oh, I guess it is okay to drink. So, 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 can we push pause for a sec?